Hi, my name is Kevin Blackwell. I'm a New Age motivational speaker, a spiritual teacher, and a counselor. I've lived a crazy up and down life, but something happened to me a little over a year ago that has brought everything into crystal clarity. But before I share what happened, let me give you a little bit of background information about myself for those of you who do not know me. Back in 1979, I was a 16-year-old freshman at Columbia University. I had skipped two grades and was admitted to the engineering program at the age of 15. In the spring semester of my freshman year, on consecutive nights, two balls of light, very colorful balls of light appeared to me in my dormitory room. On the second night, they both spoke to me and introduced themselves as Jesus and Mary. They said that they were glad that I could finally hear them, that they were happy to see me again, and that they were excited about what I was here to do. And literally overnight, I started seeing colors everywhere and feeling energy in my hands, having visions and prophetic dreams and experiences of healing. And over the subsequent months, just about every spiritual master that you can think of began introducing themselves to me. Buddha, Krishna, Lao Tzu, Confucius, Gandhi, Isis, just about everyone you could think of all introduced themselves to me. And eventually, over time, I realized that I could seek them out as well. And eventually, I realized that I could communicate with anyone in the universe across time and space. But in spite of my newfound abilities and awareness, I didn't feel special. I felt like I had been invited into a life that I wasn't ready for. I believe that the quest for awakening, the coveted goal of enlightenment, would have to take me down a long and lonely path into the dark night of my soul. And I didn't feel prepared for that. And this belief was in spite of the fact that all of my celestial friends told me that all I needed to do was simply remember myself and be myself. But I didn't listen, and so I set out on a roundabout search for awakening. I withdrew from Columbia and traveled across the country, and then I withdrew from Columbia a second time, this time from graduate film school, and I traveled to Europe. All in all, I spent seven years in meditation and contemplation, visiting shrines, doing whatever I thought I needed to do to become awakened. Finally, after seven years of frustration, I gave up. 
And in the very moment that I gave up, my soul awakened. Wall to wall bliss. It was incredible. And I was able to maintain this state of oneness, this state of awakening for about six weeks. But then doubt began to creep into my mind and I told myself that it simply couldn't be this easy. I must be mistaken. And in the midst of this incredible feeling of oneness, there was confusion because I didn't know what to do next. All of my life I had been driven by goals and ambitions, and yet in this state of oneness, all I wanted to do was enjoy this state of bliss and simply be. And so my doubt and my confusion got the best of me. And after six weeks, I gave up on my state of awakening and returned to the normal life of an insecure 24-year-old man. And I didn't return to an awakened state for another 21 years. In the intervening years, I lived a normal and ineffectual life. When I withdrew from Columbia, I disappointed my family by seemingly throwing away a, a, a life filled with promise. And so I spent a lot of time and a lot of effort trying to win back their respect and love, but all to no avail. And every now and then I would return to my quest to awakening, also to no avail. These two opposing directions kind of canceled each other out and I tumbled into a life of mediocrity. I got married and had two amazing children, but before too long my marriage devolved into an abusive and ugly mess. I worked in a bunch of jobs that I hated, a lot of jobs that I hated. And then finally, I got my MBA from Duke in 2002 and began making really good money for the next few years. But I also worked myself into exhaustion and I knew that that wasn't sustainable. So I ultimately left the corporate world and I set out to try to keep create a life that was more in alignment with my soul. And so I set out to become a speaker and a counselor. And things went really well for the first year. And then suddenly they dried up. And I started to feel like I had been checkmated by life and that I had no other choice but to jump into the abyss and enter the dark night of the soul that I had been avoiding for all these years. And so over a three week period toward the end of the summer of 2007, I literally detached myself from everything in my life. And suddenly, out of nowhere, a thought and a feeling burrowed its way 
into my consciousness and explode it out of my mouth. I'm in love with myself. And as soon as I said that out loud, my soul exploded into an experience of awakening. I had finally achieved my goal, and this time for good. Yet, I still didn't know what to do. I was sitting around New York City in these incredible states of bliss, but I didn't know what I was supposed to be doing. All of my life I had been filled with ambition and goals, but all of a sudden they were gone. And if you've ever lived in New York City, you know that it is a city that never sleeps. And sitting around wondering what to do uh, doesn't really work for New York. And so by January of 2008, I was homeless on the streets of New York. After a few months, one of my high school friends invited me to visit them in Austin, Texas. And he and his wife invited me to come and stay with them so that I could get back on my feet and start moving forward into a new life. And so once I arrived in Austin, I started to relax a little bit and I started to try to get used to the new way that energy was flowing through my body after my awakening experience. But still, I didn't know what I was supposed to be doing. And so, in the absence of a clear motivation of my own, I started going out to meetings and different gatherings, and I would meet people, and they would quickly understand, see, or sense in some way uh, my state of awakening, and they would then draft me into their visions of what I should be doing. And so I was invited to start giving talks. And so I started speaking to different audiences, first in Austin, and then I moved to Santa Fe, New Mexico, where I met people that started introducing me to people all over the world. And so slowly but surely, my popularity started to increase and I started driving from city to city in different parts of the country and giving presentations and talks. And pretty quickly, people in my audiences began to seek me out for guidance and one-on-one -on -one sessions. And many of them sought me out to help them reach awakening experiences of their own. And so my popularity continued to rise, but after a few years, I started getting tired of driving back and forth or across the country from city to city. And also I was getting drained by the constant requests for help and assistance that I received from clients all over the world. And so I knew that something was not right and that I needed to make a change. So in 2012, 
I decided to move to Las Vegas. I figured that in Las Vegas, I could cease driving around from city to city and that I could start to invite clients and followers to come see me in Las Vegas for presentations, seminars, and weekend workshops. But unfortunately, I was never able to put my plan into action because as soon as I moved to Las Vegas, I started to get sick. My lifestyle of driving around from city to city and helping people all day long had started to catch up with me. And eventually I realized that the lifestyle I had allowed myself to be drafted into was killing me. In December of 2013, I was diagnosed with congestive heart failure and in 2014, I was diagnosed with chronic kidney disease. By 2015, I had withdrawn from public view entirely as my health continued to deteriorate. One of the major symptoms of the health ailments that I had was fluid retention. And so pretty quickly, I ballooned from 210 pounds all the way up to 334 pounds. I could barely walk. And I remember that in 2016, I woke up in the middle of the night and sat up on the edge of the bed to use the bathroom and I looked back down on the bed and my body was still lying down unconscious on the bed. Now, I had been out of my body many times in the past. Over the years, I had become proficient at astral projection and remote viewing. But this time, I was out of my body because my body stopped breathing. Fortunately for me, I knew how to get back into my body, but when this happened the second time, a week later, I went to the emergency room and was diagnosed with severe sleep apnea. Could things get any worse. By 2017, I had reached rock bottom. Now, the good thing about reaching rock bottom is that you can't go any lower and things started to slowly turn around. For one, I started kidney dialysis which really made me feel a lot better and halted the constant weight, weight gain uh, from fluid retention. I applied for disability and I was designated as disabled. And so I started receiving disability checks which helped to reverse the trend toward extreme poverty that I experienced when I dropped out of public view in 2015. And then in August of that year, during the month of my 55th birthday, I noticed that two incredible astronomical events had been reported. And then on August 21st, two days after my 55th birthday, there was the total solar eclipse. 
over the United States. So I viewed all of these events around my birthday as a sign that it was time for me to reemerge. When I had arrived in Las Vegas a few years earlier, I knew deep inside that I had come to Las Vegas to die, to symbolically die and be reborn into a greater expression of myself. And so around my birthday in 2017, I felt like my prophecy was coming true. I had died symbolically, and now I was ready to reemerge. I began writing a book series that would detail everything that I had learned since the balls of light first spoke to me in 1979. And my doctors told me that I was healthy enough so that if I would just lose weight, I would be able to get on the kidney transplant list and to ultimately receive a healthy kidney that would add years to my life. So all throughout 2018, I began to prepare for weight loss surgery. And I was scheduled for that surgery on November 5th of 2018. But I have no recollection of the surgery. In fact, I don't remember anything from around the middle of October until after Thanksgiving of that year. My daughter had come to Las Vegas to visit with me at the beginning of November, and she was to stay throughout my surgery and be with me as I went through the recuperation process. But I don't remember her visit at all. Evidently, on the morning of November 5th, we went into the hospital and I did indeed have my surgery and everything went smoothly. And in fact, the surgery has been a success. I've lost over a hundred pounds and uh, I'm well on my way to being on the kidney transplant list. But immediately after the surgery, when I was in the recovery room, my heart stopped. I stopped breathing and went into cardiac arrest. It took the hospital staff a few minutes to discover my condition. And then after discovering me, it took them 33 minutes to revive me. And I remained unconscious, though not in a coma. I remained unconscious until the end of November. My doctors and my family were concerned that I wouldn't live, or they feared that if I did live, that I may suffer from severe brain damage as a result of the prolonged length of time that I had gone without oxygen. But my experience was totally different from the experience of those around me. About a week after the surgery, I realized that I was in a hospital, although I didn't remember why 
and I felt the presence of loved ones in the room with me. But I wasn't motivated to engage with them at all. For one, my body probably wasn't ready yet to engage with my surroundings. But on the other hand, I wasn't interested in engaging with them because I realized that I was alive and I realized that not only was I alive here in Las Vegas, I was alive all over the universe in many different lifetimes, both from the past and in the future of this timeline and in alternate timelines and dimensions at, as well. I woke up to the fact that I was a multi-dimensional being living in a multitude of experiences. And I found that I could look in on some of these different lifetimes and I could also return to Las Vegas and look in on my lifetime and this timeline. And no matter where I went, it was very easy for me to be consumed into that lifetime. This was amazing to me because all at once I knew without a doubt that there is no such thing as death and I realized that I was much bigger than my body, much, much, much bigger than my body. It was amazing. And I started to realize that in this new age that we collectively entered into around 2011 and 2012, the goal of awakening seemed trite. Now it seemed to me that the goal was to remember the totality of ourselves and that meant to come to the understanding that I am a multi-dimensional being having a multitude of experiences in different bodies and different places in the universe in different times in the universes. Now, what's the benefit of recognizing that one is a multi-dimensional being? Well, for one, it kind of broadens your horizons and you could learn from other aspects of yourself and they can learn from you. And it occurred to me that the goal of each of these lifetimes was to create, to discover who one was, and then to create an alignment with one's essence. And I knew that if I had the courage to create in this lifetime, that even when I failed, I would still be an inspiration to other aspects of myself. And likewise, they continued to be inspirational to me as well. And discovering one's multidimensionality you start to realize, wow, if I can be aware of these multitude of lifetimes, then if I 
apply myself, I can get a lot more done in this lifetime. You know, multitasking will become far more the norm for all of us now that we have entered this new dimension. We are simply capable of doing more, of being more and more of ourselves. It has become clear in recent years that we don't have the answers to all of our problems. And the reason that we don't have the answers is that we are only using a small fraction of who and what we are. And so we have entered this new age in a very timely fashion because we need to discover more and more of ourselves so that we can have the power and the wisdom to apply to the various problems we have on our planet and with this increased knowledge and increased power we will be able to finally address and solve these problems and move ourselves into a glorious new age. So I know that all of this may sound a little bit confusing to you. So allow me to just leave you with two simple thoughts. The first thought is, I am a miracle. I am a miracle. I should have realized this a long time ago. I skipped two grades and was admitted to Columbia University at the age of 15. And by the age of 17, I learned that I could communicate with any being throughout the universe that I focus my attention on. In the midst of a troubling marriage, I fathered two amazing children whom I am sure that you will be hearing from as they move forward into their lives and get in touch with who they are and start to express their uniqueness. In 2007, after a few decades of avoiding the dark night of the soul, I jumped into the abyss and after three weeks, I emerged with an ever-deepening experience of awakening. I experienced and took part in a variety of miracles, big and small, as the earth and humanity collectively moved in and moved through the 2011-2012 transition. I have helped clients to achieve awakening experiences of their own and deep experiences of their essence. And last year, I died and came back to life with found understanding of my multi-dimensionality. At the end of November, when I emerged from unconsciousness, I could no longer walk, I couldn't talk, and I couldn't control my limbs. So I spent the next five months in various hospitals and rehabil 
rehabilitation facilities learning how to walk and how to talk again. I obviously still have a ways to go, but in April of this year, I was able to move into my own place and to start to live independently and self-sufficiently again. My doctors all joke with me. They say, hey man, we're sorry about the cardiac arrest, but you're much healthier now than you were before your surgery. Yes, I am a miracle. I know it. It's not even a boast. It's simply a fact. But as I've come to this understanding about myself, I have always also realized equally that each of you are miracles too. Each of you are miracles too. I'm sure that if you look back at your life, you will have to recognize that you are a miracle. Think about all the problems you have solved, all the dilemmas that you have overcome. Think about everything that has brought you to this moment and you would have to realize that you are a miracle too. As I started working with clients and helping them to achieve awakening experiences and a deeper understanding of their essence, I was amazed that every time a person simply allowed themselves to be who they were, not only was it a miracle for that person, it was a miracle for the entire planet and indeed the entire cosmos. What we do here on earth matters and the degree to which we allow ourselves to be everything that we are and to live from our essence is the degree to which we change the world. So yes, I know for a fact that you are each miracles too. And so I say to you exactly what Jesus and Mary said to me back in 1979 when they appeared to me. I am glad that you are here to hear me. I am happy to see you. And I am excited about what you are here to do. Remember who you are. Live from your essence. Claim your power. Allow yourself to simply be everything that you are. Come to know that you are a multidimensional being and that God itself needs you to express and create an alignment with your essence. You are each miracles, and I am a miracle too. Stay tuned. Watch what's next. Thank you.